Hey everyone, it's Mora Viva and Shoko. Today I'm going to be reading to you a story called Farmer Greenfield's Big City Adventure by Esther Van Handel and Miriam Adahan. This week we celebrate the Yom Tov of Shavuot. In the time of the Beit HaMikdash, Jews from all over the world would gather fruits and grains from the farmers and bring it to the Beit HaMikdash on Shavuot. In honor of Shavuot, I'm going to be reading this story about a farmer. Enjoy! Farmer Greenfield finished milking the cows and called his family together. He had an important announcement to make. As you know, he began, Bubby's 70th birthday is next Wednesday. We should do something special to show our appreciation of Bubby, said Mrs. Greenfield. We are doing something very special, said Farmer Greenfield. Uncle Josh and Aunt Tilly called from the city. They are making a party for Bubby on Wednesday evening. All the aunts and uncles and cousins will be there by 6 o'clock. They invited all of us, too, even our goat Peter. Hooray, shouted little Mendy. Let's start packing, said Yonkel and Razel. They set up three boxes in a corner of the kitchen. One box held a gift for Bubby. Another box was filled with jars of homemade strawberry jam, pickles, and apple pie for the party. And the third box contained sweaters and umbrellas and games and nosh for the trip. Early Wednesday morning, they piled the boxes into the back of the family car. Farmer Greenfield and his wife got into the front. Yonkel, Razel, and Mendy clambered into the middle. Peter the goat, with a long rope attached to his collar, made himself comfortable in Yonkel's lap. Off they went. They had traveled just a few miles when suddenly... We've got a flat tire, said Farmer Greenfield. Oi vey, said Yonkel. We'll never get to Bubby's party on time, said Razel. Meh, said Peter the goat. But Mandy said, it doesn't help to moan and groan. We must trust in Hashem, and he will help us find a solution. Then Mandy walked to the nearest gas station and brought an attendant to help his father change the tire. At last, they all piled in again and drove off. They passed a mother duck, followed by six baby ducklings. They passed a herd of grazing cows. One black and white cow looked at the car curiously and said, Moo! Just to make sure we get there on time, said Farmer Greenfield, I'm going to take a shortcut. He turned left into a narrow dirt path. They rode over a small bridge, turned right around a red farmhouse, left into a pebble lane, and continued straight along a cherry orchard. All of a sudden, Farmer Greenfield stopped the car. Hmm, he said, stroking his beard. Looks like I took a wrong turn. We are lost. I vey, said Yonkel. We'll never get to Bubby's party on time, said Razel. Ma, said Peter the goat. But Mendy said, it doesn't help to moan and groan. We must trust in Hashem. He will help us find a solution. Mendy emptied his pockets. Out came three rubber bands, a broken watch, a pencil stub, two used stamps, four buttons, a small sitter, a penny, a piece of string, a spring, Mendy's key collection, and a compass. Here, Abba said Mendy, I heard that sailors use compasses to find their way at sea. Maybe you can use this compass to find our way. Good thinking, Mendy, said Farmer Greenfield. He studied the compass. Well, what do you know? We're headed in the right direction, more or less. Might as well keep going. They kept going. Suddenly, a brook blocked their way. There is no bridge in sight, said Farmer Greenfield. And no boat, said Mrs. Greenfield. Oy vey, said Yonkel. We'll never get to Bubby's party on time, said Razel. Mah said Peter the goat. But Mendy said, it doesn't help to moan and groan. We must trust in Hashem and he will help us find a solution. Mendy jumped out of the car and looked around carefully. He found some logs next to the brook. He placed them side by side. Then he went over to Peter and gently removed the rope from his collar. Abba, he said, could you please tie these logs to make a raft? In a few minutes, the raft was ready. Farmer Greenfield locked the car. We'll come get it on the way back, he said. Using a stick as an oar, Farmer Greenfield rowed his family and their goat and their boxes across the brook. It took four trips. When everyone was safe on the other side, Farmer Greenfield untied the raft. Here is your rope, Peter, said Mendy as he fastened it to the goat's collar. I'm sorry it's so wet. The wind will dry it soon. Well, now we've crossed the brook, said Farmer Greenfield. The only question is, how do we go on from here? Oy vey, said Yonkel. We'll never get to Bubby's party on time, said Razel. Ma, said Peter the goat. But Mendy said, it doesn't help to moan and groan. We must trust in Hashem. He will help us find a solution. Mendy shielded his eyes with one hand and looked carefully all around. He saw a bus in the distance. It was coming toward them. Mendy held out his hand and flagged down the bus. Going to the city? 
Farmer Greenfield asked the bus driver. Sure I am, answered the bus driver. Hop aboard. So Farmer Greenfield and his wife and their children and their goat and their boxes piled into the bus. After a while, the bus stopped to let some people off. Peter the goat smelled delicious grass outside and decided it was the right place for him to get off. In a twinkling, the goat scrambled out of Yonkel's arms and trotted out the door. Come back, Peter hollered Yonkel and ran after the goat. Come back, Peter called Razel and ran after Yonkel. Come back, Peter, yelled Mandy and ran after Razel. Farmer Greenfield went to speak to the bus driver. I'm really sorry, mister, said the bus driver. I can't hold up the whole busload of people while you chase your goat. Tell you what, the bus will wait five minutes. So Farmer Greenfield and his wife took their boxes and got off the bus. Come back, Yonkel and Razel called Farmer Greenfield. Come back, Mandy and Peter called Mrs. Greenfield. At last, Yonkel came back leading Peter by the rope. Razel came back holding Mandy's hand. But the bus was a tiny speck in the distance. We may have to wait two hours for the next one, said Farmer Greenfield. Ay vey, said Yonkel. We'll never get to Bubby's party on time, said Razel. Ma, said Peter the goat. But Mandy said it doesn't help to moan and groan. We must trust in Hashem. And he will help us find a solution. Andy looked all around. Suddenly he spotted an interesting sign with a picture of a pony. He read it out loud. Pony rides 500 yards ahead. That's it, said Mandy. We don't need a bus. We can ride ponies. Mandy and his father went to investigate. They returned with a cowboy on a horseback leading five more ponies. Farmer Greenfield and his wife and their children with their boxes mounted the ponies. They trotted into the city with Peter the goat following right behind them. In front of Uncle Josh's house, the Greenfields dismounted. Farmer Greenfield paid the cowboy. Thanks so much, mister, called Yonkel, Razel, and Mandy as they waved goodbye. Razel rang the doorbell and Yonkel tied Peter the goat to a post on the porch. What time is it? asked Mandy anxiously. Five minutes to six, said Farmer Greenfield. We are just on time for Bubby's party. Thanks to Hashem and to a boy who always looks for a solution. The... And I hope you enjoyed this story. And remember, Hashem always has a plan for everyone. Have a great day. From Moraviva and Shoko. Bye.